there was a, a guy, he had a company and um, he had uh, employees that, um, that worked for him. And um, what these employees were told by um, the flag rep was that they should um, falsify their payroll and then um, they should um, go to the bank and ask for a loan. And if this loan gets accepted, they should give the money that they have. They should give it to the org, which is then gonna be um, gonna get gonna get to Publix that they can pay in the service to um, to push the GI stat. And um, this is what they did. And then they were also taking money from accounts from people that were diseased, um, just to push the GI stat. Okay, so they were doing all sorts of crazy shit. Now, let me restate what you said, because some of the words in English um, are, are different. Yeah, okay, do that. Okay, so, so a, a, a Scientologist, a public Scientologist who owned a company. Now, the guy who owned the company, was he also a staff member? Yeah, he was a staff member. Oh, fuck, it gets worse. <laughs> okay, so a Scientology staff member who owns a company on the side, he employed a bunch of people in his business who were also staff members at the org. Yeah, right. So because he owned the company, they were creating doc a false documentation to document income that was greater than what these people were actually making at their jobs. Yeah, right. They took the records to the bank and they said, oh my God, look, I'm making so much money. I want to apply for a line of credit. The bank right. extended them a line of credit. They took all of this credit and donated it to the org. The org put it into a giant slush fund and used it to pay for people's courses and auditing who otherwise would not have been able to afford those courses and auditing. Yeah. Okay. So and then sometimes what even the staff members, uh, sometimes even the staff members who applied for the loan could then make a service. So, yeah. So even staff members are paying to do services that they shouldn't have to pay for exactly. just so that the org can count it on their statistics. Yeah. And this was so that Berlin could win the birthday game for the second year in a row. Yeah. Okay. And by the way, when I publish the interview, I'll put like descriptions on the screen to explain a lot of the stuff that we're not going to bother defining for. No, that's right good. Now. Yeah. That's good. So that so who came up with this plan? As far as I remember, it was the flag rep, and it was the ED. Was the ED a Sea Org member? No, she was a staff member. How long would you say this fraud went on for? Um, I would say, um, yeah, shortly before March 13. Because I remember on the 12th of March, the ED flew to Florida, to Clearwater for the event. And um, I, as far as I heard, um, she was still, she was um, getting prepared to go to the, to the stage. And then it popped up because then um, CEO Cielo was, uh, CEO Cielo EU, he was also in, uh, in Florida. He got a call, I think from his wife who was in Copenhagen. And she told him that three staff members of Berlin were arrested because of some trouble that happened in Berlin. And then it all blew up. And then the whole event had to be remodeled. There had to be another person, like the, the person, the staff, the org, who was supposed to be on a second place, that they won the birthday game. So everything had to be recreated because Berlin was obviously not winning the birthday game. Wow. And it was a whole thing, really. <laughs> the staff members were arrested on March 12th? Yeah. March the 12th. day before the birthday event. So, yeah. so when I said like, how long had it been going on for, obviously these people were arrested on March 12th, 2000. Would this have been March 12th, 2009 or 2010? Yeah. 2009. So when in 2008, would you estimate this thing started? Um, around October. Oh, all of this happened. So for about five months, do yeah. you have any idea how the bank found out about this fraud? 
as I heard, um, they got suspicious as um, as the as uh, the same story appeared on different banks. I mean, as what I understand is that the banks were talking between each other and they got suspicious that um, every week there is a person coming up with the same story, going to a bank, asking for a loan. And then they got suspicious. And then I think, I mean, I don't know for sure, but as far as I heard, they, um, they just stopped the whole cycle when that one person went to the bank on March 12th and then um, started to investigate into that cycle and found out that it's actually just fake. Wow, this guy who owned the company, was he only doing this with people who actually worked for him or was he taking Scientology staff members and just pretending that they were, that just straight up creating fake employment and payroll records? Like, was he just using anybody and pretending that they were employees? Yeah, was yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah. It was not just only staff people who worked for him, but he was also like faking contracts, saying the person worked for me and then blah 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 time because the account, the account person, like the book account who worked for the company too, was also a staff member and a Scientologist. And they were just all in this birthday game thing. Like they were just crazy, you know, everything birthday game, birthday game, birthday game, and then the flag wrap who was just putting the orders there, you have to, you have to, you have to. And then the pressure, it was so high. So they actually had like no chance to um, do anything else. Um, did everyone in the EC and AC of the org, but particularly EC, know that this form of fraud is how the income and delivery stats were being propped up? Yeah, everybody knew about that. Wow. So you're still on post as the ED's communicator when these guys get arrested. Yeah, I was and even- so what happened in the org? Uh, I, I remember I, I was already at home when uh, on March 12th and I got picked up from the um, HES. And he said, I, I need to come to the org. It's uh, something happened, I need to come in. And then I, I went with him with the car, we drove to the org. And in the org, it was a total mess. Like everybody was running around. Like I remember the DSA, she was totally, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, because she was already thinking what will happen, of course, the consequences. And um, I was, I was, I got briefed what happened and I was shocked because the, the guy with the company, he, um, he is the husband of a very good friend of mine, which I had that time. So she, her, his wife, was at that time a very good friend of mine and um, i called her immediately and i told her hey did you know your husband got arrested and then and he went, what and then she didn't know and then everybody came to the org it was a whole thing <laughs> she yeah, didn't was, even know she didn't know no. how did anybody else know because the flag rep went to the bank with these guys and he stayed in the car and he watched the whole situation. And then he saw that they, like the police came and then they got arrested. They were even put in jail overnight. And then he went back to the org and he briefed the org. They got arrested right there at the bank? Yeah. Wow. So then did they get prosecuted? What is that? Oh yeah, I know what you mean. Um, there was a trial, I think. I, I know I know there was a trial and they um, they had to pay. I don't know if they were prosecuted, if there was anything as a consequence happening for them. No, the, the owner of the company, he got prosecuted. There was something with him. He didn't went to jail like for a length of time. But what I remember is they had to pay a lot of money. What was the name of the guy who owned the company? Thorsten Wolf. And I guess I'm wondering why those guys are the only ones who got arrested if the scheme involved other people. Because they, they, were, they were the only one the police or like the, the people on the bank spotted. And they could, um, they could be judged right on the front. 
like the other ones they we only knew the bank didn't know i mean i don't, I don't know if they were all putting on the, on paper like who else did these crimes to the bank but um internally everybody was put on ethics what well, like these guys that were arrested what were their posts in the org um he torsten was a registrar he was i think the body wretch then the other one who was arrested she was the disinsec and uh, the one staff member who who went there for applying for the loan he was in treasury i don't know their income or something wow. that's incredible uh did anybody get declared um torsten he got a uh, b declare really yeah did he do his a to e and get back into good standing yeah he did yeah what a sucker <laughs> oh my god oh my god did anyone else get declared no he was the only one wow did the org have to pay for their attorneys oh i don't know this i don't know you never sat in on the financial planning or anything um no i just know from the dsa that there was an attorney i don't know if he was from the church or if he was somebody who was good with the church um this i don't know was there any you know considering how much the german government uh dislikes scientology did this get covered in the press did this create additional problems for scientology in germany no because they were all putting it under the curtain they were all like right. um making sure that's why we had to all who, who was aware of it we had to sign these waivers to not talk about people about what happened on march 13. and then um, people were also getting paranoid they were putting when when they were going in the meetings we had to put our phones outside of the meeting because they thought that the government would listen, like they would hack into our phones and then they would listen to what we were talking. So it's like, it were, we were all going paranoid because um, yeah, we thought because the DSA told this and then we thought, oh my God, so we had to put our phones out of the meetings. Wow. 